I am quite confident that pretty much everybody here has a jar of marmalade at home. If you're like me, that jar is probably forgotten somewhere in the fridge or in the back of one of the drawers in the kitchen, and most likely, nobody would like to have it on a piece of toast, right? Well, the coolest thing about this jar of marmalade is that it only takes an easy wash to wipe out all the rotten marmalade and get the jar perfectly clean, recycle, and repurpose for something else. And let me share something with you. The organs inside your body are more similar to that jar of marmalade than you might think. And actually, we can recycle both of them in a similar way. My name is David Martos, and I'm a tissue engineering scientist at a startup called Engitix, where our main goal is to provide innovative healthcare solutions by understanding how the human body works through an alternative route. And this is one of the things that I like the most about what we do, and is that we are not constrained by the things that have been done previously in science, and we are actually trying to solve the same old problems by exploring new solutions. And in the next few minutes, I would like to share with you what has become my passion during the past years. To do so, I would like you to forget about the way we have been taught that Cells are the unique component needed to form tissues and at the end organs. And join me in this journey exploring our alternative route. Because we are washing organs like those jars to face a problem that goes far beyond some old marmalade. Currently, in the UK, there are 6,000 people in the transplant waiting list. And last year, 400 people died while waiting. These numbers are just a part of the story, because if, for example, you have cancer, you're not eligible to be on that transplant waiting list, and you couldn't even make it to those statistics. Meanwhile, 25% of the donated organs are deemed unsuitable for transplantation, and they are directly put into the garbage. This is a 1,000 organs every single year in the UK alone. These 25% of the organs come from the eligible donors, but there are another 14,000 organs that come from potential donors that did not fulfill the transplantation criteria, and they are not even considered. There are two main reasons why these organs are discarded, and they both have to do with the cells inside of the organ. The first one is that the organ didn't receive enough oxygen, so the cells started dying, and the second one is that there might be a risk of transmitting disease from the donor to the recipient. But what if we could actually overcome these cell-related issues, recycle those organs, and put them back in circulation for transplantation? Let me share with you how that super simple process that I just explained with a jar of marmalade can be translated and replicated into an entire organ. Science has been focused in the past years in the study of the cells, which is the marmalade. We have studied the way they behave and how they interact with each other, but in our body, there is far more than just cells. And actually, one of the key components of every single organ is the housing of the cells, the structure that they rely upon and that acts as a scaffold. And that scaffold is the jar. This jar, this scaffold, is called the extracellular matrix. It might, it might sound very complex, but it's nothing else but the mesh of proteins that resides outside of the cells. But for us, this scaffolding is the key player in the recycling process. This recycling process, as with the jar of marmalade, consists of wiping out all the marmalade, all the cells from the organ. And to explain it, I'm going to use the liver because it is the organ that we are currently working with. First of all, with the help of several reagents, we wash away, we completely wipe all the cellular material in the liver, leaving behind the scaffolding of the same in a process that we call decellularization. This is how a liver without cells looks like, kind of like the ghost version of the liver, and indeed, this is the first ever human liver decellularized by Giuseppe Mazza in 2015. But, great, 
we have completely removed the cells from our organ, having the scaffolding behind. However, the cells that we just removed are the ones that provide functionality to the liver, and we definitely need a fully functioning liver. We cannot transplant an empty organ. So what we are going to do, what we try to do, is we try to put cells back in a process that we call recellularization. <laughs> right? So healthy cells are introduced back into the liver, and they are so smart that we expect them to migrate to their original site to become fully functional. So bringing it back to our jar of marmalade, this would literally be like introducing some fresh marmalade, some fresh jam into the same jar. The crazy thing about this process, and one of the key aspects, is that the cells that we are introducing back come from the future recipient. So we are actually tailoring, we are personalizing every single liver to make sure that there is no rejection after we transplant that into a human. The science behind this, this process looks extremely promising, right? Because we are completely getting rid of the cellular material. That is the part that makes your immune system say, ah, I don't like that. We are getting rid of that part, leaving just the scaffolding. And we all have the same scaffolding. This means that we can go beyond age differences, we can go beyond ethnic differences, or between, beyond sex differences between the recipient and the donor. We can skip the matching requirements that most of the times make it almost impossible to receive a transplant. The 25% of the organs that right now are being discarded could now be used. We could save the life of, of a thousand people every single year in the UK, no matter their requirements or their conditions. This project has the potential to give hope to those in the waiting list. But although the results behind this science look extremely promising, we're still 15 years away of transplanting an organ that has gone through this entire process. But the crazy thing about science and the most amazing thing about this project in particular is that we are not creating a single-use technique. The scaffolding of the organs, as a key component of the same, have something to say in the good things, transplantation, but also in the bad things. Indeed, it has been proved that changes in specific parameters of this scaffolding, such as, for example, um, the composition, or even the stiffness, how hard the scaffolding is, might affect and can modulate the advancement of diseases. So we know that the scaffolding plays a key role in the development of disease, and we know how to isolate it through decellularization, which means that we are not only solving the transplant problem, the shortage of organs, but we are creating a platform. By understanding how this platform works, we could unveil a new world of possibilities. Right now, we can create 3D models, and we don't even need the entire organ. We just need a tiny piece that is representative of the overall structure of the organ, and we could apply these 3D models for drug discovery, treatment development. These 3D models could allow us to bridge the gap between clinical application and basic research, jumping over the need of conventional laboratory experiments or animal testing or even risky early stage clinical trials. We are trying to shift the spotlight from science from the habitats of the, cell, of the organs, which are the cells, to the housing itself. I believe in a future where we can recycle more than just glass, plastic, or paper. I see a future where the scaffolding of our organs receives the importance that it has. Imagine a, fu imagine a future without transplant waiting lists, and maybe without organ trafficking, because there is no shortage of organs in the world. I see a future where we can give hope to those in the transplant waiting list, but also to those with cancer. But most importantly, I believe in a present where science is effectively communicated so that we can all be a part of these amazing advancements. Thank you.